Christmas is upon us, gently brushing its way toward us, like fog. When does the Christmas season begin? The day after Halloween? The day after Thanksgiving? When the stores first put up their holiday displays or start playing Christmas music throughout the aisles? Or is it Christmas time when we first think of it? When the fog is first spotted? Christmas is crass and beautiful, empty and spiritual painful, and comfortable. Christmas has a great power in telling us how we feel. If we're happy, then Christmas makes us happier. If we're unhappy, then Christmas makes us miserable. It's a barometer, a psychic, a friend who can look us over and see us, inside and out, and sees the problem. We remember the heartaches of the year. Letting go of old friends, unable to find new ones. The bills that stack up around us, the strangers on the sidewalk who look at us, or avoid looking at us. The cold. And then Christmas comes up, the most wonderful time of the year, and if all of the heartaches got to us, if they reached in and tangled us up and squeezed too tight, then Christmas knows, and Christmas makes us miserable. It's a tease, a taunt. Christmas is bright and jolly and happy. And if we're not bright and jolly and happy, Christmas feels like a farce. The contrast is too much to bear. Nothing is more miserable than being around happy people. Christmas is like a complete stranger telling us we should smile more often. It's patronizing, condescending, infantilizing. How dare they? How dare they tell us how we should feel? How dare they assume that smiling and pretending is what we really need, or that this feeling, this pain, is something we chose, that it's somehow our fault. Christmas magnifies our pain, it shows us who we really are and how we really feel. It exposes us. We can try to avoid it, but how? How do you avoid something as ubiquitous as Christmas? It's everywhere. Every shopping mall plays the same five Christmas songs on repeat. Every conversation at work ends up being about Christmas, and God help us if the office starts putting up decorations. Is that supposed to make work feel like home? Because we were avoiding putting up decorations, but they just put them up by our desks or our cubicles anyway. Nobody consulted us. Nobody asked if we were having a hard time or let us lean our heads on your shoulders. Talking to people in our lives about it gets a bunch of nods and glib reassurances, or sometimes even rejection. So we surround ourselves in Christmas instead of avoiding it. We watch the movies, the holiday specials, we go and see the trees and the lights, we go to church. We buy gifts for our friends and family, the ones who will still talk to us. We do our traditions and our songs, and we pretend. We pretend that everything is okay. If everyone is happy, and everything is happy, then why aren't we happy? If Christmas can't make us happy, nothing can. For people without a significant other or children, the holidays can be a lonely time. Seeing everyone celebrate with their loved ones while we do not demonstrates that contrast again. That miserable contrast between what the world says Christmas time should be and what Christmas time is for us. We're not Scrooge or the Grinch, we're depressed. That's the worst of it, isn't it? Being depressed at Christmas, unhappy at Christmas, makes those who feel at ease during the holidays think us misanthropes. Judgment has been passed, and for crimes against Christmas we are found wanting. It's only once a year, people tell us. But is that really true? Christmas season, at least in the United States, spills its way into November and nearly all of December. It's roughly two months of the year. Linus tells Charlie Brown that it's his own fault for his Christmas-time depression. He has turned it into a problem. But he hasn't. Not really. Charlie Brown is like the rest of us. He's depressed at Christmas. For him, the solution is to learn the Christian meaning of Christmas, but depression can't be solved with a speech. It's a long battle, one that is never so much won as it is brought to a stalemate. We fight it all our lives and keep it at bay and hold a weapon to its throat. 
and maybe if we're lucky we can find a way to make it vulnerable and make ourselves stronger. The truth is, enjoying Christmas comes after becoming happy. If Christmas will make an unhappy person more miserable, then Christmas will make a happy person appreciate Christmas. The lights are no longer blinding. The season is no longer as cold. The people no longer the subject of envy but of familiarity. The smiles come naturally. The traditions are no longer just pretend. We watch the movies and holiday specials with sincerity now. We go and see the trees and the lights, not out of obligation, but out of genuine love. The fog is lifted. Merry Christmas, everyone. Divine silver